Selena Zito is here for the Yinzer Report. Good morning, Selena. How are you? I'm swell. How are you? I am terrific. You know, this is the best of times, the worst of times. Best of times because the Guardians are playing the Yankees in the American League Championship Series beginning tonight at 730. So the whole world is rooting for my club, the Guardians, except the tiny number of Yankees fans that there are in the world. And it's the worst of times because the Browns are, have decided not to play. I don't know if you watched any of the Browns-Philadelphia Eagles game yesterday. Apparently, Team Harris thinks that you can win Philadelphia voters by advertising in the Phillies game because she was all over uh, the uh, Eagles game. She was all over that game. What do you think? Does she have a prayer in Pennsylvania? Well, I mean, she has a prayer in Philadelphia, but in Pennsylvania, she's always had a really, really tough um, time. It's just, just not a good fit for our state. This is a person that has really, really never had to run a, uh, and earn the vote of a Republican voter who doesn't have Trump derangement syndrome um, or an independent voter or a uh, you know, sort of a centrist Democrat. In California, almost everyone is, you know, in line as a progressive Democrat. So she, her ability to communicate and relate to that voter is a challenge because it's never been part of her portfolio. By the way, who's the Guardians? <laughs> well, I go along with the flow. I, I don't have enough bandwidth to argue the Indians thing forever. Selena, oh, okay. uh, luckily... <laughs> Luckily, we have the, the vice president recognized her inability to communicate. So she went out and got a superb communicator as a running mate, right? Tim Waltz. He's, he's really overwhelming. Did you see Tim Waltz goes hunting? That hurt my heart. <laughs> <laughs> as, someone, as someone who comes from a family of hunters, that was really, that was, that, that was hard. Um, I, I know he's in Pittsburgh today, but nobody knows where. I do know that he will be in uh, an Amish town in, and then Butler on Tuesday. But, um, uh, you know, the details are the tiny at best. I'm not, yeah. I'm not quite sure what's going, what, what's When you what's see that video there. of the governor, does the deer hunter come to mind? Is that how Robert De Niro oh. and, and began the deer hunter with that kind of effortless oh. ability to not load a shotgun? That again, that just that just hurt my heart. Remind me of uh, John Kerry in Poland, Ohio, in two thousand four, October twenty second, two thousand four. That's how much that was in my memory. Um, and and you know, I mean, just don't try to be something that you're not. Because what the thing is with voters, they're always looking with great scrutiny for authenticity. They, you don't have to be just like them. And when you try to be just like them and you aren't just like them, it flops. Look, Selena, I have no idea who's going to win this. I told uh, dinner guests last night, nobody knows what the turnout model is, so everyone's guessing. But I think Team Trump feels pretty good, and I think Team Harris is falling apart and panicking. What's your gut tell you right now about the way the election is moving? Well, I can talk about my state because I'm just sort of, in, you know, this is I'm not moving because it, it seems to be whatever happens in Pennsylvania happens in the Great Lake Midwest states of Michigan, Wisconsin, obviously um, Ohio, and and to the earlier point, it's she's not a good fit. Now she will do well in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, but in in Philadelphia you have to get. If Walls is ha if Walls if Harris is having a good night, she will have a million more voters than Trump um, in in Philadelphia. But you know that didn't happen even in 2020. The, the, again, the, I say this over and over again. But if you're looking at a map on election night, watch Cambria County, watch Luzerne, watch Erie, see what the turnout is in those counties, and that will tell you pretty much how the rest of the night is going to go. Now, Selena, I, I do not hold myself out as any kind of expert on the African-American demographic. Uh, I'm not. But I do know that Barack Obama berating the, quote, brothers, close quote, is not a good look 
It went viral no. and it didn't go viral because it was inspiring. How does he, how does that play in Philly, do you think? So I was talking to black male voters in Pittsburgh and that didn't go well there. Um, you know, nothing is more insulting. In particular, he then goes and talks in front of an all white audience. You know, that, that is even dumb, more, that's even more insulting, right? That he's going to lecture black males about who they're supposed to vote for. Um, you know, and I, I asked J.D. Vance about this in Johnstown, Pennsylvania on Saturday. I'm like, is this how you go after voters that are skeptical about you? And he's like, no, I wouldn't do that. That's insulting. You know, you right, I'm going to talk them. to Selena during the break. We'll put it over at YouTube. I just only get her once or twice a week, so I like during, especially during election season. If you don't know, go subscribe at QQ it. Uh, YouTube doesn't cost anything. It's free. You can watch it. All of Selena's, because I got to ask her the key question about J.D. Vance, Martha Raddatz yesterday. And, oh, it's only a few apartment complexes that have been taken over by violent Venezuelan gang. Nothing to worry about. Stay tuned, America. I'm coming right back on this Monday morning. All right, Selena, two things I want to cover with you in the break period. Number one, here is uh, the beginning of a quote of J.D. Vance and Martha Raddatz, which was heard around the world. She's, of course, the fill-in host for George Stephanopoulos. She's, she's been in D.C. longer than I, I mean, she's been there forever. And her husband, her second husband, I think, was the ch married to an Obama FCC chairman. I think we know she's a, a blue bubble person from the Beltway. I don't know, Martha, but here is she and J.D. Vance, cut number six. I understand what you're saying, that some people left behind, but he's making these statements that the mayor is flat out disputing. Well, Martha, you just said the mayor said they were exaggerated. Grossly um, exaggerated. There's got to be some... That means there's got to be some element of truth here. And, of course, President Trump was actually in Aurora, Colorado, talking to people on the ground. And what we're hearing, of course, Martha, is that people are terrified by what has happened with some of these Venezuelan gangs. Sen Senator Vance, I'm going to stop you because I know exactly what happened. Martha. I'm going to stop you. The incidents were limited to a handful of apartment complex, uh, apartment complexes, and the mayor said our dedicated police officers have acted on those concerns a handful of problems. Only, Martha, do you hear yourself? Only a handful of apartment complexes in America All right, were taken stop right there. Selena, I've got nothing against Martha Raddatz, but I'm going to stop you there, Senator, because I know it, it's like the person, it, it was so, it was the, the consolidation of every reason why America hates the Beltway. I know, and you don't, J.D. Vance. What did you think yeah. of that? Uh, well, first of all, it shows it is the perfect example of a press that is completely located in a safe bubble where people that would scare them or because they're known criminals, right, won't be living next door to them. So they don't have to worry about it, right? There, there is no, there's no sense of, of concern about your safety because it's not going to happen to her. So just because there's only a couple, I mean, American families should not be afraid because gangs from whatever country, including our own, are moving into your apartment complex and you are afraid to go outside and walk your dog. You're afraid so, so to what, go. What is wrong with ABC News? I could ask this about CBS and their struggle session over the interview with Mr. Coates. But, I mean, ABC did the David Muir, Lindsey Davis, completely unbalanced, uh, biased debate. Then they come back with Martha Raddatz going after J.D., and J.D. has to say, do you hear yourself? I, I mean, where does this supreme confidence combined with intellectual arrogance come from? It comes from, and you and I have talked about this so many times, that our cultural curators— in the media, but also in corporations, institutions, in government, in Hollywood, all live in the same super zip codes that of wealth and power. So they don't understand how the people that they cover or who are trying, who want, they want to buy their products who, or who sit in their seats don't, don't have the same experiences that they do. And they're so disconnected from our lives 
but they don't understand, they, they ridicule the things that we are concerned about. And it's incredibly troubling that we don't have an unvarnished pre press that looks at America without those prejudices going into the coverage. Do you think, I've known Mike Kaufman for 15 years. I campaigned with him when he was uh, deployed in Iraq. I campaigned with his wife when he was deployed to Iraq and, and they needed surrogates, so I went in there. Mike is a very interesting personality. He's been a never-Trumper for a long time, since 2016. I didn't know he was now the mayor of Aurora. Of course, the mayor, who originally commented on the story, will take care of it, doesn't want the bad press for his city. But that, do you think Martha Raddatz has ever met Mike Kaufman? Do you think she's ever been to Aurora, California, uh, Colorado? Uh, if she has, it was just to fly over it or drive through it. If you are, go I mean, one of the, the, the tenets of my coverage is if I'm going to talk about coal miners, then I've got to go into a coal mine, right? You've got to go where the people are to understand their concerns. And if you're not doing that, or if you're not sending a field staff to do that and they can communicate that to you, you're not going to cover it authentically and you're going to end up looking like you're looking down your nose at them. So I think we're being, last question, Selena. I think the national elites have concluded that Kamala Harris and Tim Walz are the worst candidates for president and vice president in modern times and that they're going to lose. Who are they going to blame for this? Because they're not going to blame themselves, although I think they are, in fact, at fault for the Democratic Party's insular inability to understand what's going on in America. So I think they're to blame. But who do you think they are going to blame if she loses? Oh, that, that's easy. The deplorables. The people that are the unwashed, the uneducated, the people that don't know any better, the ones that they need to send in and teach them how to really vote and really think. Now, obviously, I'm being sarcastic in terms of calling people deplorables. However, that's what I think they believe these voters are. Well, Hillary used that term. Yeah, right? Hillary did use Hillary did use that term. Um, uh, but but this is how they actually feel about these voters. And, and they don't seem to understand that the voters that decide elections are the people they don't know, the people that live in Michigan and, and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, all right? And Who actually Ohio. go hunting and fishing. Now, I want to close this. I don't know if you listen to Ruthless Podcast. Do you listen to Ruthless, Selena? They went fishing with J.D. Vance on Lake Michigan. It's a hilarious episode. They tried the old frozen fish deal, which I'm going to talk with Dwayne about because we used that with Tim Pawlenty when we went ice fishing with him 20 years ago. Fact of the matter, they have no idea that Tim Walls can't load a shotgun. I can't load a shotgun either. I'm not Mr. Shotgun. I don't own weapons. I don't go hunting. But I know when someone is faking it. And I think everybody in the media, in the legacy media, doesn't know when people are faking being Midwesterners. Right. It's because they looked at that video and thought, oh, my God, that's great. And I looked at that video and I'm like, the only thing he's not doing wrong is putting his face in the barrel of the gun. Well, they had people in front of the gun. You know, the, the one time I've been to the range with my brother-in-law, the safety instructions lasted about 30 minutes and the shooting lasted about five that's 10 yeah. years ago. And, and I'll tell you this right now, the gun safety measures that ought to accompany a hunter were not in evidence on that video. No, that was really uncomfortable. <laughs> I was really wondering what was, might happen. Yeah, it was not good. Uh, Selena, always a pleasure. Thank you, my friend. Selena Zito, all of her work can be found at selenazito.com. And you can follow her on X at Zito Selena. She's on top of Pennsylvania. She's on top of the swing states. She knows exactly what's going on. Trust her, listen to her, follow her, selenazito.com. Thank you, Selena.